there are some interesting examples of uh, expert communities that are very active in Wikipedia. And this is, these are just some examples uh, of uh, uh, cases uh, of these expert uh, niches. Uh, there are people adding structured chemical data uh, to Wikipedia pages uh, in the area of chemistry. There are diff different calls from the, uh, the community of uh, ornithologists uh, and uh, um, uh, clinicians. And uh, um, there's a recent initiative that's, that looks very promising from the um, Association for uh, Psychological Science, who's also trying to get uh, a better representation of uh, um, researchers in, in, in scientific psychology in, in Wikipedia. Uh, but these are all uh, experiences that are very much uh, scattered and uh, they're not really um, systematic. So we started with a discussion uh, on a, a FriendFit thread and Daniel was here and was uh, uh, collaborating on this study, uh, was the one who initiated the discussion. And at some point we realized that uh, maybe we should turn the discussion into a survey to try and gauge uh, uh, the reason beyond anecdotes, the real reasons why uh, academics or, again, experts in the broadest possible sense are not uh, participating in Wikipedia, and especially to try to identify what are the main barriers uh, on the one hand and what are the potential opportunities for ex uh, experts to join the, pro the program. So um, we prepared a, a survey. Um, it was a web survey, so it was a survey that was uh, uh, recruiting subjects uh, not in a, in a scientific way by controlling the sample, but by trying to recruit the largest possible uh, number of respondents via an open call. And the survey was uh, uh, disseminated via a number of outlets, including um, scientific uh, um, um, blogs, uh, like Nature Blogs, the Wellcome Trust, uh, the blog of the Open, open Knowledge Foundation, uh, a number of social media, uh, banners on scholarly publishers like Springer Plus agreed to um, to disseminate this survey uh, for um, during the duration uh, of the of the survey, and uh, a number of uh, articles in the mainstream press like the Guardian or CBS News, uh, on top of other uh, solutions like mailing lists and uh, and um, a side notes on Wiktionary. And uh, the basic idea behind this uh, this survey uh, was basically to look at. Uh, uh, four different sets of questions. So first of all, we want to know more about uh, um, the demographics and the kind of expertise, both of non-contributors and existing contributors uh, to Wikipedia. We then wanted to, uh, to gauge the perception of uh, Wikipedia participation among one's peers. So uh, there are many anecdotes uh, uh, about, uh, well, in, in, in one's field about why people should or shouldn't participate in Wikipedia. And they all relate to questions of uh, authorship, to problems of social interaction with existing editors, uh, to problems related to the quality of information in Wikipedia. Um, in some cases, uh, there are problems of wiki literacy, so not knowing how to edit a wiki, not knowing what a wiki is. Uh, and uh, there are also problems related to the question of uh, uh, the kind of contributions that experts can make uh, in such a project. So, uh, and we try to contrast uh, this shared perception with uh, the question of, uh, personal motivations to contribute, because in some cases, uh, a perception of a barrier could actually be in conflict with an actual motivation to participate or not to participate. And finally, we considered um, um, the question of uh, uh, a researcher or an expert's attitude uh, towards uh, open science uh, and uh, open collaboration as a potential, potential driver of uh, contributions to Wikipedia. So the the survey um, uh, ran for a couple of months. We ran an initial pilot uh, in, in, uh, between December and January last year, and then we closed the actual survey uh, in April uh, this year. And we collected a total of uh, uh, about 2,600 uh, responses, 1,600 of which were completed. And uh, um, again, this is not a, a sample that's representative of the underlying population. So. Uh, it should be taken uh, with this uh, important caveat. <clears throat> Sorry. But we still think that it's a, a, very rich, uh, a very rich sample and a sample that we'll be releasing uh, in an anonymized form to allow uh, more people to look into that and to study other questions that we didn't, we didn't address. So these are some general uh, uh, figures about uh, the respondents. We had uh, about 57% of uh, respondents were uh, self-declared contributors to Wiki, Wikimedia projects, um, well, to uh, at least uh, all Wikipedia, not Wikimedia projects in general. 
and we have uh, about 40% of uh, uh, non-contributors. Um, interestingly, we had uh, uh, 43 uh, percent of uh, respondents who were available for follow-up interviews, and 33% uh, um, uh, of these uh, um, respondents were non-contributors. And we had respondents from uh, a variety of fields. This is an overview of the fields, uh, an aggregate overview of the fields uh, uh, from which uh, different respondents came. And uh, uh, we cover something like 80 countries, uh, with a vast majority of responses coming from uh, English-speaking countries. Um, there's a question we asked about uh, where experts are, are editing, and we asked in particular whether ex experts were editing in their area of expertise, and the vast majority of contributors declared that they're um, contributing only in the area of their expertise. Um, there's a smaller portion of editors uh, who are editing only outside of their area of expertise, and this is a very interesting pattern because we see many experts uh, who consider that uh, Wikipedia is a fun project, and they join Wikipedia, but uh, they edit, like, uh, I don't know, if they're physicists, they edit articles in local history. So this is a very interesting category of, uh, of users we want to, uh, to study. And there's a, um, a minority of, uh, of users who um, edit in, uh, both in their area of expertise and outside the area of expertise. Um, this is an, another interesting um, observation about uh, gender of resp uh, respondents. Um, we saw that uh, uh, non-contributors uh, were roughly uh, responding uh, with the same uh, uh, with the same uh, uh, frequency, but we have uh, we have a much higher number of uh, male respondents, uh, which sort of uh, mirrors the uh, the known uh, gender gap uh, uh, in, in Wikipedia. And uh, so, 80% of respondents that declare themselves as contributors uh, uh, were male, and only 70.6% uh, uh, were female. Uh, we also have an interesting distribution of uh, age and professional status. So uh, the majority of respondents uh, were uh, uh, young uh, researchers or experts, so presumably graduate students uh, or uh, young researchers. Um, although we had a, a sizable number of uh, uh, tenured faculty members and uh, researchers, both academic and uh, uh, non-academic, uh, as well as uh, retired uh, uh, retired researchers and uh, other kinds of experts. Now, we looked at, uh, uh, this is just a, an overview of, uh, of the responses uh, that we, we got uh, per user category. And so the first, uh, the first uh, heat map uh, is a, a sort of a global overview of uh, the most frequent responses by a given category of users. So you'll find the details uh, in, a, in a link that I give at the end of the, of the talk. But basically, we looked at the, um, at the response of a spe for a specific question. So a, a, a given column is a specific question, and we look at the responses for specific categories. So we have contributors and non-contributors, male, female, um, very active editors, less active editors, editors in a given uh, age group, et cetera. And we, what you can see is that, uh, so blue is a, um, is a strong agree, uh, so, sorry, dark blue is a strong agree, and uh, dark red is a strong disagree for all the questions we presented. And what you can see from this overview is that uh, if you look at the responses for a given question, there doesn't seem to be any major disagreement uh, per question. So uh, the columns tend to be fairly homogeneous. Right across uh, uh, categories of users. At the same time, we see that uh, some questions are much more polarized. And by this, I mean that uh, we, even if we focus on the most frequent responses, we saw that in some cases, some responses triggered a, a polarized reaction. So uh, quite as many users responding uh, with, the opposite, uh, uh, with the opposite option. And this is obviously very interesting to, to capture uh, uh, different kinds of sub-communities within the groups that we're considering. So if we look at uh, um, pairs of groups, like contributors versus non-contributors, male, male versus female respondents, uh, uh, active versus non-active non contributors, etc., we can identify uh, um, cases in which uh, the disagreement uh, is, uh, is uh, the strongest. So this is, again, just an overview of areas in which specific pairs of, uh, 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 of categories of user respondents uh, express uh, uh, disagreement uh, uh, along specific dimensions. So again, columns are for questions, and uh, rows are for 
categories of users. So um, I'm just going to cherry pick a number of results because we don't have the time uh, uh, to, to present uh, all, the, uh, all the data. And, um, and this is just to start a conversation. We're hoping to get as much feedback as possible and, uh, and also have uh, other people contributing uh, to uh, uh, dig into this data uh, as soon as we re release it. Um, so yeah, we have a number of uh, selected uh, uh, slides showing some interesting effects. The first one is uh, uh, the response by, um, by professional status to the question of whether Wikipedia is a reliable source for research purposes in one's uh, field. And you'll see that, uh, um, so we have, uh, uh, the original scale was a, a, a five point uh, leaker scale from a strong disagreement to a strong agreement. And we aggregated responses just to display disagrees, uh, neither disagree nor, nor agree, and agree, right? So red is for disagree and blue is for agree. And you see that uh, uh, for all of these categories, whether you're a contributor or a non-contributor, uh, the vast majority of responses disagree with this, uh, um, with this statement. At the same time, if you ask people um, to respond whether they agree or disagree on the question, whether Wikipedia is a reliable source for educational purposes. Now, most people uh, consistently agree with this question across all uh, categories, with the interesting ex exception of tenured faculty member, uh, which is something probably I should discuss with uh, Frank Schulenberg regarding the uh, global education program, uh, because it seems that at least a large part of, uh, uh, of professors still uh, don't believe that uh, um, Wikipedia is a reliable source for, uh, for educational purposes, whereas other categories of users, so maybe more research-oriented, believe that uh, this is a possibility. So this is one of the interesting effects we found looking at uh, professional status. Um, there was also this interesting question regarding uh, the uh, hairy question of uh, um, um, original research. And we know this is a, a policy that's been uh, uh, hotly debated in the context of, uh, of Wikipedia. And we were curious to see how uh, researchers uh, perceive this question as part of their contributions. And we saw, interestingly, that uh, uh, even, even though these are all uh, self-declared experts, um, in the case of contributors, there was a strong agreement that uh, as a researcher, I'm not allowed to write about my own research in Wikipedia. Uh, but actually, non-contributors had uh, uh, much more balanced responses. Uh, suggesting that uh, there might be a barrier related to uh, what people consider acceptable uh, in Wikipedia. At the same time, this could be uh, maybe a good occasion to uh, start a conversation about what it means uh, for a researcher to share, uh, to, to contribute contents to Wikipedia that fall or, or don't fall under the original research policy, because I think this is a, 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 pretty, uh, a pretty complicated question. Now, uh, we also asked a number of questions re related to the, the problem of uh, not just contributing to, uh, to Wikipedia articles, but reviewing articles. And this is part of a, of a project that the, uh, the foundation is ex uh, starting to, uh, start to explore regarding the possibility of engaging experts uh, to, uh, to produce or share um, uh, assessments of the quality of articles, especially articles in, uh, in areas of uh, scientific relevance. And what we saw is that um, uh, about 70% of, uh, of respondents uh, would consider helping rate or review uh, articles. And this was consistent uh, across uh, uh, different categories uh, of uh, um, demography we, we considered. And uh, interestingly, we saw that if we look at the breakdown by age, we see that the, uh, the categories that are most likely to respond positively to this question are either those of a younger researcher, uh, like uh, younger than 45, uh, or researchers or experts that are older than 65, suggesting that maybe these are the categories we should target uh, to implement something like a, a, a review system for, for Wikipedia um, articles. We also looked at the um, at relation between uh, the uh, percentage of publications uh, that are uh, in the open. So we asked the uh, respondents to, if they had any publication uh, how many of these publications were uh, available under open access. And uh, we looked at the, uh, at the proportion, um, a normalized proportion between contributors and non-contributors as a function of the, uh, of the number of uh, publications 
that are that, that were available in the open, and we see that there's a uh, there's a, a pretty interesting effect. Uh, so people who are um, uh, who have all of their publications available in the open uh, are also more likely to be um, Wikipedia contributors, so expert Wikipedia contributors. And that suggests that uh, there might be a very interesting connection with uh, the open access uh, and open science community in terms of uh, being uh, our primary target to try and increase the uh, participation of experts uh, in, in the project. So, um, Finally, we ran, in collaboration with a, a researcher uh, based in the UK, a number of uh, um, analyses uh, on, uh, um, on the text comments. So we had a, a field at the end of the survey where people could uh, uh, give us free comments uh, on the reason why they think uh, there are barriers or potentially uh, unexplored opportunities for expert participation. And we obtained a very large number of comments, both from uh, contributors and non-contributors. Now, if you just look at the frequency of words uh, in, uh, in these two categories uh, uh, of contributors and non-contributors, um, and we filter out uh, common English words, and we filter out Wikipedia, which is one of the uh, most frequent words, we find that uh, time is the, is the uh, highest ranking um, um, keyword, unsurprisingly. But an interesting, uh, an interesting idea is that uh, if you look at the actual uh, frequency responses, Time is 20% uh, more frequent than the second term in the case of contributors, and it's uh, 150, time, uh, 150 times more frequent than the second term in the case of non-contributors, non suggesting that time and allocation of effort uh, is potentially a concern uh, for engaging experts uh, in, uh, in Wikipedia participation. And we also ran a number of uh, uh, more sophisticated analyses based on uh, uh, text modeling techniques, uh, again, looking at uh, how particular comments uh, map uh, to specific categories of users. And uh, uh, this is an example of an algorithmic, algorithmically extracted uh, topic. Uh, um, so topic number seven, these are the uh, semantic components of this topic. And uh, again, we looked at uh, whether specific topics uh, significantly um, associated with uh, uh, specific categories of users in our um, um, sample of respondents. And we found that uh, topics that are significantly associated with non-contributing relate to uh, time and effort involved in contributing to Wikipedia, um, to issues of reliability of Wikipedia's contents, or how Wikipedia is used or cited by students, and to issues of uh, lack of recognition and reputation uh, in contributing to Wikipedia and the general fit with the scholarly workflow. Um, so the details of this uh, analysis will be published uh, uh, on, on Meta uh, after this presentation, so you can look at the actual, uh, the actual analysis and, uh, and suggest uh, new, new problems we should look into. So as a summary, I'll, I'm trying to keep this as short as possible so we can get like, some uh, a constructive interaction. Um, we found that, uh, surprisingly, uh, there's a lack of areas of major disagreement uh, between contributors and non-contributors. Uh, we would expect to find some very strong, uh, um, strongly opposing views between these two categories regarding specific types of barriers in participation on Wikipedia. And uh, the, the, the survey suggests that this is not the case or that these effects are much more specific than we, um, than we expected. And uh, uh, the main barriers to, contrib to expert contributions appear to be in the area of uh, uh, time and effort allocation, which again suggests that there, there may be, uh, there's something we can do uh, as, a, as a movement uh, and as a foundation to, uh, uh, to engage more experts. At the same time, uh, there are some factors that we cannot control for, like uh, uh, the lack of time that experts have to put into, into uh, such a project. At the same time, we, find, we found that there are some interesting opportunities related both to the idea of uh, reviewing content and maybe using reviews uh, as a way of uh, further engaging uh, experts uh, in Wikipedia participation. And at the same time, to engage with the uh, open access and, and open science community. And uh, I'd like to um, highlight uh, uh, another talk we're going to give uh, tomorrow during the uh, the first session um, in the morning regarding uh, an open data and open access policy that uh, um, within the research committee we are implementing to try and join forces with the, uh, with the open science community. So if you're interested, uh, you should definitely join this session. Um, and as I said, we'll be publishing the data uh, and uh, the preliminary analysis of, uh, of this uh, survey 
on that page on Meta. I need a bar after, yes, sorry, you're right. Yeah, wiki slash research, thank you. And you can get in touch if you have specific questions uh, or ask me a question now if you're curious to know more about the survey. So, thank you. Oh, sorry, I should mention one last thing. Uh, you will find that the, we have a, a live demo <coughs> of the survey even if it's not active anymore, you can look at the exact question that we asked. Uh, there's a copy of the survey that's available from this page uh, on Meta. Yes? I just want to mention that, uh, you know, the, there was the graph and he was asking why the people don't want to edit. Right. So my name is Peter Brosch and I'm from Czech Wikipedia. And I just want to mention uh, with the graph that uh, why the experts don't want to edit the field to which they are expert in. And I think so because it's a hobby for them, you know, the Wikipedia. And if you spend all the day in the work with something, you don't want to do the same uh, at home. So it's, uh, I think so, it's so uh, without a solution how to motivate the people, you know, just continue with the same work at home. Yes, that's correct. Actually, we had questions that control for uh, factors like fun. Mm -hmm. So editing Wikipedia as part of, uh, you know, activities that have nothing to do with your professional work. And that's a perfectly, uh, good reason. At the same time, uh, uh, as I said at the beginning of the talk, uh, um, experts, uh, well, professors uh, are systematically producing uh, educational materials that uh, basically well, could be reused if they were channeled into like uh, the appropriate licensing terms uh, mm. or the appropriate uh, uh, outlets like Wikipedia. So I think that uh, there's part of their professional output that could be captured by, by our project. This is my second comment, what I want to mention. I have experienced that the professors in Czechs, often they don't want to publish something somewhere because they don't have the right citation of, for example, images which are uh, taken from another works, and so then they cannot publish under the free, uh, free license, uh, license, so. Well, that's a question for Daniel. <laughs> we'll be working on, on this. Project. Yeah, the, the, the problem certainly exists and uh, we cannot do much about it uh, right now immediately, but we can try to educate professors about that. We can, uh, yeah, that's... Um, so, so, sorry, I cannot imagine that I arrive, you know, in the professor's office and just say, hey, I'm going to teach you something, you know, it will be just like, all right, go away. <laughs> no, well, you, you could have a, a local Wikimedia editing uh, workshop and if it's widely advertised such that even a professor would see it, maybe some of them would join. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a slow process working with professors, but yeah, after some decades, it has an effect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. <laughs> Well, actually, I was expecting Daniel to, to react on the question of uh, um, licensing. licensing and, uh, you have now a lecture on licensing. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the for the now talk. Yes. Um, I have one uh, kind of a remark and one question. So the remark uh, goes back to the uh, first couple of seconds of your talk when you said that. Uh, well, um, the people from academia they sometimes spend. Uh, uh, a lot of time on stupid activities like peer reviewing and instead of just sharing their information on the internet. So first of all, peer review is the basic uh, thing that uh, um, gives the quality of uh, uh, the, the, the appropriate quality of the material. And second, well, uh, sharing is uh, not necessarily done with Wikipedia. Sharing is, S sharing is not necessarily done with Wikipedia. So mo most, most of the people, they do share their educational material. They just don't do it on Wikipedia. Right. They might even use Wiki website, but one, once you do it on Wikipedia, they feel like they are losing control over that mm -hmm. because once they want to change something, update something, remove something, it's, in, it's very hard to convince the administrators to let you do that uh, unless you are an administrator. So, but that, that's just a remark to, to, uh, to yeah, clarify. Yeah, so uh, just a comment. I, I yeah. don't think I said, uh, something like uh, uh, peer review is stupid. Peer review is a uh, no. You is didn't. That, that's uh, that's. Uh, I'm translating what you said into a no, normal no, language. No, no, was, no, no, no. I was trying to make a more subtle point. Uh, I, I've already tweeted that you said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can discuss this later. But uh, no, I was trying to make the point that uh, there's uh, many. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm involved in discussion about the future of peer review uh, for some other reasons, and uh, there are many many people, uh, including well. Uh, 
people who, who spend a, a nugget lot of time doing peer review and serving as uh, editors or reviewers uh, for, for journals or for conferences, uh, that are, even though, they, even though they do this and they realize this is part of the work, they also keep complaining about the system and not being optimal and being like a, a, a sort of a system that is based on 19th century uh, procedures that we haven't changed and we should change, uh, given the fact that today we have the web and we have other ways of, uh, of assessing quality and sharing um, and, and, and measuring uh, the validity of, uh, uh, of scholarly research. But this is a separate discussion. So it, I don't it's, want to, it's a separate and a very a separate discussion. discussion. I, 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 uh, well, we need to, to see your, your tweet uh, to, <laughs> to see whether, okay, whether, so, I should post, so, uh, whether I should post a, form, uh, a disclaimer or not. But uh, uh, I'm, I, I was trying to make a different point, which is about the fact that uh, uh, peer review takes uh, an incredibly large uh, amount of one's time. And it produces a relatively small, tangible effect. I mean, it produces. It well, produces that, that, that's a big disagreement on, on, on that. So, yeah. I'm sorry. You that disagree. Is a, yeah. a big disagreement because it, it does produce the, the the quality of of the content. Well, there's a there's a there's a there is a long discussion. Let, let, let's take it offline. Okay. Let's it's take a, it offline. It's a separate discussion. So, yeah. the, my, my my real question was because that was I said just a small remark. And the real question is, well, this is a survey. It's, it was very nice to, to, to see it, a lot of uh, very, uh, uh, very nice information. So uh, the next question is, what now? Well, what now? We have uh, a number of plans. And these are, in particular, uh, running follow-up interviews. So uh, as I mentioned, we have a large number of people who agreed to, uh, to follow up uh, uh, with interviews. And, uh, we think we should, as a result of, uh, so once we have a better understanding of, uh, of this data and once we have uh, more quality information about, uh, uh, about barriers and opportunities, we, we could try and explore with new mo models of, uh, of expert engagement. And I'm thinking of models that are different from, uh, from those uh, that the Global Education Program is experimenting with, but uh, um, focusing on, on projects that would directly target uh, researchers uh, in the form of uh, uh, Assessors of of, uh, of contents or reviewers of contents, and then potentially becoming direct contributors of uh, of Wikipedia articles. And there's a bunch of uh, interesting models out there, uh, like the Encyclopedia of Life uh, or other cases in which uh, we see something that could uh, could become a, a good entry vector for for experts. But I can tell you more if you're interested in this. Thank you. Yep. You, point, you pointed out that 70% of respondents said that they would be willing to uh, potentially assess article quality, uh, which is a big freaking deal. Now, that doesn't mean that they will actually do it if we ask them, but it indicates that if they will do anything, this might be the one thing that they would be willing to do. And we have contacts uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation with expert scientific associations who have either already undertaken larger scale uh, engagement of their members or have expressed willingness to do so. And that would be a, a real opportunity to contact tens of thousands of members of scientific associations, point them to a very easy and straightforward to use interface for getting assigned articles to review, leaving comments for improvements, having those comments funneled to Wikipedians who can then decide on their own terms whether they want to action them or not. But that I see as a very real and actionable path forward, uh, which is supported by the research and also by the uh, individual experiences that we've had with the research and expert community. Thank you. Okay. Just last question. and. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, one of the things you've mentioned is that uh, most researchers, at least ec except for those tenured researchers that are not involved in writing Wikipedia, do see Wikipedia as a, uh, a positive uh, or a po possible educational tool. And w when, when we look at the incremental influence of an individual researcher in Wikipedia, it might exceed his incremental contribution to research in general as a researcher. I mean, in some cases, I don't know, some researchers are excellent and are making terrific contribution to science, but most are not necessarily so. You know, their incremental contribution is not necessarily that much significant as much as they could contribute as editors. I, um, from your survey and from those individual interviews that you've been conducting ever since, 
to what extent do, can you uh, tell the difference between those who are involved in contributing and those who are not involved in contributing in the sense of how they view their own capability of contributing to you back to society with the... Mm -hmm. Well, we have a number of questions that uh, target the issue of uh, whether people are doing this because they have a you know, they can create free reference materials that are accessible, accessible for everyone. And this is uh, for, for a um, uh, accessible subset of uh, uh, participants is one of the, um, of the most strong motivation to do so. Uh, but we shouldn't think that this is the, the main reason why uh, everybody should, should, should join Wikipedia. So um, I like the idea, so what you said about, uh, you know, a small contribution that can have a, a much larger effect is a nice way of framing my point about uh, uh, peer review. So I think that, uh, uh, a relatively small investment of effort could actually create uh, um, um, uh, an output with a very, a very large impact. So, yeah, it's a good point. Thank you. And if you have a question, come and find me. Um, I also learned that this week. Um, my name is Cheryl, and um, I have a username, Mishchem GSI. And um, I'm here to talk about the student club we, that we started at the University of Michigan in the United States um, in Michigan. Um, so before actually I start that, um, I'm just going to give a quick overview as to how student clubs work in the United States for those that um, might be unfamiliar. And then your university systems or your student club systems will potentially work differently. And but I first want to have a caveat is that you don't have to do your club or, or start your club the same way we do ours. And so these are just um, options that we have done and just give you ideas on how you can start your club. But um, sorry, excuse growl. Um, <laughs> So first off, uh, it's part of the university system most often um, because the, most of the student, most of the members are students at that university. Um, they're completely student-run for the most part. So the students are the presidents and the vice presidents as well. Um, and then what the club normally does is they host events, so social events and, and outreach events for non-members of the university, just um, as a means of getting their name out there. And then um, oftentimes they're affiliated with a particular department or um, um, its type of institution, like uh, March for Dimes is a, is a good one in terms of raising money for um, babies who perhaps have a I have time to, time to have disease that they're born with. I have pictured here is our Michigan solar car team. We do have internationally related um, groups on campus. And this is just an image of one of them. So the Michigan solar car team goes to Australia every year to race their car. So just to give an idea. Yeah, and we, I think we do pretty well. Anyway, it's pretty exciting. Um, so first, a little bit of information about uh, Michigan. Um, we're up in the in northeastern United States. Um, with a really small dot. So Michigan is a very, very large university. There are over almost 42,000 students, and there are over 1,000 student organizations or student clubs. So you can see that it's quite the, um, like to be a student club, it's just normally what to do. And so that's just pictured down there is just, I'm in line to get my registration to participate in a student uh, organization festival, basically a, a way to recruit new members. And so I'm at the back of the line. You can see how many student clubs are standing there. Um, and so like I said, the organizations range from fundraising all the way to um, athletics, academics, and leadership. And like I said, there's a couple like the solar car team and then uh, a few also fundraise for um, uh, charity uh, organizations. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of why um, sort of the motivation for doing this and how we got started. This um, conference has had a lot of uh, examples of um, how we're using Wikipedia in education. I just wanted to briefly outline what we've done in chemistry specifically that my advisor and I have had students um, significantly uh, expand sh um, stub articles or very, very short articles on important aspects in chemistry. And so these are just a few to showcase what our students have done. They've even like have made their own um, images of important catalysts that we have used in chemistry. Um, if you want a more uh, exhaustive list, it's under UM Chem Professor, is the, her username. So if you want to check out some of the work that our students have done, they're really, really great. And we're excited to contribute more chemistry to Wikipedia. But the reason for that is right after that um, um, 
project was over, we decided to survey the students uh, one semester and a year later and ask them if they were still editing Wikipedia because a lot of their responses after the project was that they really enjoyed it. That's why we've done it for two years is they like the exposure that Wikipedia had, almost exactly the same things that you've heard from all the other educational talks um, in this conference. But the problem was that only about 18% continued to edit after the semester was over. So that's, so we got them started and we got them editing. They made more than their 100 edits. But they weren't going back to it after the class was over. Um, or, or if they were, they were just making very, very small edits. So they knew the edit button was there, but they weren't using it. So the quick, quick question was, now we have this resource. There are so many students. I think we had, um, um, almost 200 students go through my courses and edit Wikipedia, so that's 200 more students that knew how to edit, so how do we keep editing? And then there's a question is perhaps an added benefit is to develop some type of offline community. So there's an interesting quote here that I've taken from one of Robert Kraut's papers uh, that basically says that in online communities, members' frequency of interaction with others is a major determinant of the extent to which they build relationships with one another. More exchanges among community members provide opportunities for members to build social connections and create both liking and trust. So that's an interesting quote. So, um, which is why I think that a student club or some type of offline community be, would be potentially a great way to keep students motivated. So um, first off, I'm just going to briefly outline the mission of the uh, Michigan Wikipedians. As I said, only 18% of the students continued to edit. So one of our main goals is to have a community in which the students continued to edit. They meet more regularly. Um, the students then would gain experience in publishing, improve communication skills, and research skills. So the club is not just open to only um, uh, past uh, like people that have been in the classes. It's open to anybody on campus. So I don't want to make that clarification. Um, and then also Wikipedia will gain long-term editors, improved content, and then also believers in a free culture, or the free culture movement in general. So some of the goals I want to outline for the Michigan Wikipedians. Outreach is the main one, because that seems to be easiest to build the community. Um, it's some type of ambassador incubator. So a few, few of you, I believe, have gone to some of the campus ambassadors' uh, talks. And so this can also be another means of training potential campus ambassadors. Um, we want to establish partnerships with related institutions. Um, there have been lots of glam talks happen in this session as well. So this could also be another incubator for creating some of those partnerships so that we can perhaps have a Wikipedian in residence at those institutions. Um, we uh, like to have coordinated projects as a means of motivating students, so such things as editing Fridays or whenever we meet, and then perhaps um, picking a collaboration of the week in which the students would work on. And then, of course, um, a goal of Michigan Wikipedians is to sustain the club. So I have a year left before I finish my degree, and I don't want the club to die when I leave as well. So that's one of our goals. Um, so quickly, organization of the group. Um, we have an advisor, or, uh, which is a staff person or a faculty member at the university. Um, that's just someone who makes sure that we are following all of the university's protocols that they have required. And as I said, there are over a thousand student organizations at Michigan. So it's important, lots of things to keep track of. But the leader of the organization is the president. Um, they plan meetings um, and direct the board. So the rest of the board is the vice president, the secretary, treasurer, and a public relations officer. So briefly, really quickly, the vice president is obviously just help the president out. Secretary take notes and keeps track of our membership. The treasurer uh, keeps track of our funds, or so, um, responsible for funding. Uh, and then a public relations is just a, a, way, a person who recruits our members and advertises our group. So here's what a typical meeting looks like. So we meet um, about every uh, once every couple of a uh, couple of weeks. Um, we first start off with some type of icebreaker. So I don't know if you guys play the wiki game ever with some of your friends, but basically through all the blue links, you connect to randomly chosen topics that do not relate. So students work together, sort of an ice breaking, and they try to get from one topic to the other. Whoever can do so the fastest wins our icebreaker. So the next thing we do is we do sort of an aspects of editing presentation that takes about 
30 minutes. And some examples of presentations that we've had is that Frank was able to visit us at Michigan and talk about the Wikimedia Foundation and what they do. Um, I do uh, editing for beginners talk. Um, Arbitrarily Zero, you guys have might have heard of him. Um, he's a student at Michigan. He talks about creating a new article. And then uh, Greg, who's part of the Michigan Libraries, um, I'll talk a little bit of, at the end about our partnership with the Michigan Libraries, um, was able to talk a little bit about copyright. So not only do the students learn to edit and try to get motivated to edit, but they also uh, learn the, about the little bit int intricacies of things that are important, like copyright. Um, and then we have an editing session that lasts about 40 minutes. And then um, we, at the end, we prepare for upcoming events. And so now I'll talk about sort of what the outreach activities that our student club does. Oh, sorry. Briefly, so this is just to show you sort of a screenshot of what some of the editing presentations are. If you have any questions about those, just let me know. Um, so some of the events that we do is the fall festival that I mentioned earlier that in which over a thousand student clubs uh, show, off their, show off their organization and try to recruit students. Um, another one that we've done is show the Wikipedia documentary, which, which was Truth, Truth in Numbers. And so that's part of decentralizing the leadership. As I said, one of the goals for the, for the club is for sustainability. The club will continue even though the students graduate every couple of years or so, or the leadership graduates. And then um, we sponsored an editing contest as well to motivate members. Um, this contest only lasted for three months, but the club total um, was over 700 edits for us. And then a majority of our members, um, actually 80% of the members were, were, were new editors. So the fact that we've done 70, 700 edits as a, a group, a majority of new editors was, was pretty significant. So we're quite happy about that. So our, our biggest event this year, um, I forgot to mention that this is our first year as a club, and so our biggest event of the year was to celebrate the, the Wikipedia 10 celebration, and we did so as, a, as hosting a trivia night. And so we had over 80 people attend, so there were 15 teams of um, playing trivia. Are people familiar with trivia night, sort of what happens? Somebody is emceeing and they ask a whole list of questions, and each team works together to answer those questions. And the team that answers the most number of questions correctly um, would win. It's just a random set of questions about movies, about um, directors, or we also have a picture round in which they have to identify what this picture is or this architecture. So, that's generally how trivia nights work. Um, we, we're able, this is definitely a great way of advertising your group and letting people know um, that you're out there and that you exist. We gained, I think we gained about five or six members considering we were only were about 10 at that point. Um, we gained about half our new members, so 50% new members. So it was really exciting um, in that aspect. So again, I just want to over, um, talk about some of the student benefits in having a, a student club. Um, these students gain teaching skills. Um, they gain logistical and organization skills when they have to plan a campus-wide event, such as the trivia night. Um, they get experience both virtually in collaborating on an article, as well as face-to-face -face collaborations. And then um, an opportunity to build a commu community unique to editing Wikipedia. And one thing I want to add, considering the um, face-to-face -face collaborations um, and bring back the quote that I mentioned earlier. Um, Sue's question this morning was, was quite intriguing as to how we can gain more female editors. And I think this quote here hits home in the fact that perhaps female editors are a little bit different than, than male editors or in, in the way how we can recruit them. And it says the effect of gender, uh, so this article talks a little bit about contributions in, in economics and economics research. Um, but I think it's, uh, and talking about group, um, interactions, and it says that the effect of gender on levels of contribution is significant. The coordination and group efficiency increases among women who interact with members of a naturally occurring, occurring group, while the effects are opposite for men. So just, a, just a thinking about a, a different way of recruiting new members is that perhaps a student group or some type of organization, outside organization, would provide that. Um, so as you guys are thinking about your club or thinking about potentially starting one, I wanted to first outline some of the challenges uh, that we had and adaptations that we're going to do in year two. Um, so maintaining active membership. So we had a lot of members who came in at the beginning and they were coming uh, and they would hop in every now and then but not um, come in every single week or every time we had a meeting. And I know occasionally sometimes things get come up and you can't attend every meeting, but we'd like to increase that membership a lot more. And um, 
maintaining a consistent meeting place and schedule is, and space is part of that. And then um, meeting in a computer lab space. I wouldn't depend on students bringing in their own laptops. Um, they might be running from marching band practice, which was one of the students in which he just didn't carry his computer. So um, I would recommend that. Um, the membership sort of also feeling lost in what they would edit. And so again, as one of the goals, um, as a collaboration of the week, we'd like to provide a specific topic that the whole, the group as a whole would edit. Um, and then also more um, contributions from the group is to have a year long editing contest. As I mentioned before, we only had it for three months previously. And then um, to add in uh, some t another event type of photo scavenger hunt so that the things that they upload are not just text but also images as well as that opportunity. So, um, I just quickly want to acknowledge some people. Um, before I, I um, Jesse's going to come up here in a second if she's okay with it, because we didn't get a chance to meet. But she's going to talk a little bit about what the foundation is doing in terms of making tools for other student, students to start clubs and make it a lot easier for you and, and, and help along that. But before that, I just wanted to do some acknowledgements. I mainly like to thank the Michigan Wikipedians, especially Arbitrarily Zero and Greg G, who are definitely two, uh, they are going to be, Arbitrarily Zero will be next year's president and he's going to be really, really awesome. So I'm excited for the group next year. Um, I like to thank the Wikimedia Foundation. Foundation, especially Jesse, and then as well as the Wikimania Committee and Wikipedia Israel for, for allowing me to come here. Um, the Michigan Libraries, um, Greg G and Leaf BGX. Um, so as I said, um, we've had a lot of support from our Michigan Libraries in which they're really excited for this group and the potential that um, not only, just as the, the Global Education Initiative is working on, is that it's definitely a way to share media literacy. Um, all about, so they're, they're all with that, and so we're really excited that they're on board with our club. And then mainly how this project got started, that is my advisor, UM Chem professor, and um, the University of Michigan. But I wanna give Jesse some time, so I'll have her come up here. Sure, yeah, stay up here with me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Cheryl's a great example of somebody that's taken a lot of personal initiative in setting up an organization like this, and it's very, wiki, I guess, just to be able to start your own sort of group and do whatever works really well on your campus with your sorts of, with your classmates or whoever is there. Um, and these are the sorts of things that uh, we want to help start encouraging around the world, especially as we think of um, university outreach, which has been a constant theme I've noticed throughout this conference. Just a lot of talk has been about the, you know, more really official program of campus ambassadors, but there's a lot of things that can be done without these sorts of official programs or really um, constructed programs on your campus, and clubs is a great way to do it. So um, Cheryl gave a lot of really examples. There's some more um, information on the outreach it's the outreach wiki. Um, so you can just search, search for student clubs on there and there's a whole bunch of pages to kind of talk about how you might think about getting started pulling together a group of students on your campus if this is something you're interested in. Um, yeah, so there are already eight clubs that are offic like officially up and running as in they ha call themselves by this sort of name. Um, Alex is here. Oh, at, yeah. Alex, Alex is here. here at this conference as well. So if you want to talk to him about how he's working with James Madison University, I would definitely recommend you talk to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a good reason to talk to him is that each of these sorts of organizations are really unique. So they're all focusing on different, very different things. Um, some are at schools that have a campus ambassador program. So the student club place is a place for students that come out of the class that have already edited. They can you know, join a group afterwards and aren't just done as sure as was true on your campus that way they had a, a place to go um or it could be in again a place to ha host the campus ambassadors as well and a place for them to interact um there's a lot of other things that they could help with glam is a really big one universities often have this, uh, some of the best museums the best libraries those sorts of things um and it's important to note this shouldn't be done this isn't in lieu of a chapter by any means so if you are an organization that happens to have a chapter in your country or city even, you certainly should work with them. But it's a way, like, so for Cheryl, for example, in Michigan, well, in the US, really, there's not really a chapter for you to, to be involved with. And there aren't people that are already working with the institutions on their campus. So um, it's great for them to take that charge. Um, yeah, and obviously, the main point is just to have fun. It's not um, supposed to be an incredibly structured and, I mean, full of requirements or anything like that. 
So there are um, there are a couple things I just want to mention briefly that. Uh, so again, this is all things that you can do yourself and if you want to start something like this. And you can talk to me about it, you can leave comments on the wiki about it, and people will offer their suggestions. There are a few things that um, I guess the foundation is helping try to support. So one of those is um, the trademark policy. So obviously there are a bunch of trademarks requirements with being able to use the Wikipedia uh, Wikipedia logo and all of those things. So I'm working with the lawyers to try to get to just get a simple copyright thing. So right now you have to go through the process of emailing trademarks at wikimedia.org, um, which you still can do, but we're working on just getting a, a really simple sort of online way of being able to get that sort of approval and just sign because this it's obviously a really complex topic. So that way that can be facilitated. Um, there's another thing that we're working on, which is the, crea the creation of different, uh, I guess different identity pieces that each club can kind of mix and match and form their own sort of logo or to make their own merchandise and those things. Similar to um, the, Wikimedia, uh, the Wikipedia 10, um, I don't know if you guys were involved, anybody here was involved with the design process for that, but it was essentially just a way of doing individual collaborative design, but with a lot of different types of pieces. You could mix and match what you thought was the best design and what represented your country the best and your logo, and your, I mean, in this case, your university the best or your state the best. Um, maybe it is a country level, whichever. But um, we're, oh, I'm working with a designer to try to come up with some good types of design elements so you can kind of create your own sort of thing. Here's some prototypes of things that he's come up with now. Um, no idea if these will be what actually go through, but this was just the first set of things. But yeah, if you have feedback on them or have better ideas, please email me, jwild at wikimedia.org, or leave comments on the wiki, of course. Um, yeah? So yeah, that's all for me. Uh, and Cheryl, thanks for your presentation. It was great. Yeah, I can. Oh, you can do it. I can take questions if anybody. Oh, go ahead. Played for creating one of those eight clubs Jesse mentioned. Oh, great. Yay. Uh, Thank you. Glad you're but here. But it, it's not up and running still. Like, uh, we run into some problems with the institution. It's in my alma mater. Uh, uh, the person, I, we, we chatted with Jesse for a couple of times. It has run into some uh, bureaucratic troubles at the college. But the, uh, the question I wanted to ask was, like, you have some exclusivity clause in your membership rules that the persons who haven't edited in uh, uh, a certain time should be excluded. The, uh, the guy who's actually going to start the club wanted to ask me this question. So how are you enforcing that rule or that rule is just for sure there? Um, yeah, so that, that constitution is, um, was more of a just for show. So at the moment we are not um, very strictly following that. Um, Michigan, so you saw there were a, th a thousand clubs at Michigan. Um, I'm sure a thousand more apply. And so I looked at a sample of their constitution and, and then fit it, like whatever clause that they had, wrote mine so that I would get in to be a club at Michigan. Um, I don't know if that's the best response or, or what, but I would, I would <laughs> so we don't take that very seriously um, unless somebody, the next president, if they want to, they can. Um, it was just, um, a way into Michigan's institution, virtually. So I would look at um, some of the other clubs on your alma mater if, if they exist um, and if they have existing constitutions and if they, if they say, like, you can write one without that clause and they're like, you are open to too many people, you can probably write one in and then in your head not really do it. But anyway, <laughs> our constitution is not very strict. Or we are not very strict at following our constitution. But. Thanks for asking. Thank you. And thanks for using it. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh. Yeah. There's no other question. Maybe I should comment. Um, yeah, a few months ago, we launched uh, a certain uh, national uh, writing competition in, in the Israeli um, uh, Wikimedia chapter, Israeli chapter of Wikimedia. Oh, great. Uh, it regarded the, the culture of uh, a Beta Israel, uh, the Jews coming from Ethiopia and Ethiopian culture in general. And it was highly successful in several terms, both in participation and in output, and in uh, gender relation. It was roughly half and half uh, the ratio of contributors and of uh, winners in this competition. Oh. Half were males and half were females. Awesome. And that was, this was all excellent, except in, 
I mean, one of the, the aspects in which it, we were unsuccessful is in reaching students, actually. Despite the fact that we were acting through uh, student unions and spread the word via email to all relevant students of African studies, etc., none participated in this competition, none. So uh, I, I, I couldn't stress more the fact that it's not enough to do advertising, even face-to-face -face advertising. You must come there and actually make, maintain this kind of, uh, of uh, activity just as, as you have done in Umich. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I guess oh actually, I think we're out of time. I was, do you want to talk to me in a second after? I'm Lynn Hamilton, and the title of my presentation is Article Creation in the Composition Classroom. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, quick show of hands here. How many of you are educators? Would you raise your hands? Oh, there are quite a few people. Look at that. Okay, this is good. How many of you would say that you are interested in retaining new editors, new talented editors on Wikipedia? Raise your hands. Okay, good. That gives me kind of an idea of where to put the emphasis on, on this because I'm going to try to talk about both. Okay, since 2008, I have been asking my students to write articles on Wikipedia as part of their college composition class at Georgia Southern University, which is a state university in the United States. And I've had a lot of interesting experiences with this. And what I've found is that I really, really like this assignment and that it fulfills a lot of what I need to do as a writing instructor. As a writing instructor, I need students to be able to do good research, document their research, paraphrase, summarize, organize their thoughts into a way, into a format that's appropriate for their audience. Wikipedia requires people to demonstrate that they can do all of these things. So this has actually been kind of an ideal assignment for me and for my students. So I've been very happy with it. This is what I've learned that students get out of writing for Wikipedia. It builds on what they learned to do in high school, especially the book report, the classical book report. Um, it takes that and requires them to go to the next level with it, juggling multiple sources rather than leaning just on one resource. Students also come to Georgia Southern University with a diverse skill set, but one thing most of them have been exposed to is that book report. One thing that most college composition classes have in common in the United States is that we are always teaching students that it's important to write for your audience, to identify an audience and then allow that audience to shape your writing. Again, Wikipedia is a wonderful assignment for me and my students because it gives them a real life audience to write for. This has been a solution to an ongoing problem that I've had. Writing for an audience is easy to say, but it's hard to do in the composition classroom, and this is why. Probably the first and most important way that that breaks down is that students rightfully perceive that the real audience they're writing for is me, the college professor, the person giving them their grade. And so that always runs interference with their writing for their audience. Um, the other problem with having students write for an audience in colleges, college composition classes is that it can be hard for students to get their work 
to the audience that it was written for. So, for instance, if a student of mine says, okay, I'm going to write an editorial for the New York Times and writes a beautiful editorial and then sends it to the New York Times, he may probably get a nice little email back saying, we don't accept unsolicited editorials. It's impossible to evaluate whether he's actually written successfully for his audience or not. So that's another place that audience breaks down when we teach audience and we teach students to write for audience in college classes. So as you can probably see where I'm going with this, Wikipedia solves that problem for me. It's a real audience with consistent standards. Everybody can write for it. Nobody's going to be told, oh, we won't look at your work. We won't consider your work. That's not going to be a problem with Wikipedia. The Wikipedia assignment also solves the problem that I have frequently had, which is that students write for very different audiences produce very different work. So, for instance, one student in response to an assignment might write a 200-word letter to the editor of the New York Times. That's happened. And publish it, and so he's successful. And another student will write maybe a 1,000-word editorial and publish it in her local newspaper. I'm hoping that what you can see is that that creates a problem for me in evaluating their work. How it's, it's apples and oranges, in other words. It's very difficult for me. It kind of muddies the water. You know, has this one student done a lot more work than this other student? But has this other student been more successful because he published with a more prestigious venue? You can see how that gets problematic. Again, the beautiful thing about Wikipedia is that everybody's writing for the same audience. So. Another thing that I've really enjoyed about this assignment is that it allows students to write about what they're interested in within reasonable limits. And in rural Georgia, where I come from, there are actually a lot of opportunities for people to write about their hometown, their counties, their regional areas. They can write very often about monuments, about events that took place. Um, there are, in fact, a lot of open articles yet to be written on Georgia, I think part, partly because it's a very rural area. And so students have written articles in my class, articles like this one. I thought this was kind of fascinating. My student wrote an article about a football stadium that was written, in, that was created in his town, and it's made almost entirely out of granite, and this was built in the 1960s entirely with donations and with volunteer work in the community. It's the kind of thing that I don't think you could actually afford to build a structure like this entirely out of granite anymore, and so this is just something that's sitting in his hometown. That nobody had ever written a Wikipedia article about it, and I was very impressed that he was able to write this and publish it. As another example of the kind of articles that my students write about Georgia. I had a student write about Godfrey Barnsley, who is a very important historical character in Georgia, Georgia history. And both of these articles were started from scratch. The students, there was no stub, there was no nothing about these topics on Wikipedia. The students completely created them. Another one of my students took the stub article on the Bullock County Courthouse and expanded it. Uh, and so I was very pleased with that because that was a service to our local community as well. So I have some pretty strong opinions about what professors should do who want to teach students to write by having them write on Wikipedia. I really do very firmly believe, and everything that I'm hearing has reinforced this conviction, that professors who want to do this need to write their own article. They need to write an article on Wikipedia. I think that on Wikipedia there's no substitute for learning. There's no substitute for learning from doing. You can read the thousand and one pages that have been written about how to write for Wikipedia on Wikipedia, but that's not necessarily the most expeditious 
way to learn. I think the, the fastest way to learn is just to write an article. And then you immediately see what the issues are that people have to deal with when they do this kind of work, what kind of feedback people get, what people will harass you about, what they won't surprisingly harass you about, etc. And so I do think that that's very important. There are a lot of reasons that college professors do not want to become Wikipedians. We've heard some of them in this very session. I think one of the many reasons is the college professors do not like to become beginners at something. They see themselves as the experts and the authorities and somebody that people ought to come from afar and sit at my feet and learn from me. And it can be very difficult to relinquish that position of authority in any way and become a newcomer, become a beginner. And I think that Wikipedia makes beginners of all of us. That's, that's the truth. You can be a rocket scientist, and yet when you go to Wikipedia, you have, there's going to be a learning curve, a little, little one at any rate. Even for very technical people, I think there's still a learning curve. I did attend the Higher Education Summit in Boston recently. Wikipedia is reaching out to colleges and getting professors like me interested in having students write for Wikipedia. And one thing that emerged was the difficulty that people were having when students' articles get deleted, the difficulty that professors have in evaluating uh, this kind of work, what happens if the article gets deleted. So what I've found is that it's very, very important to have students run a draft, preferably a full draft of their article, by me before they upload it to the website. And it's very important that that be saved someplace so that we can come back to it if there's any question about whether they actually did the article. So if the article gets deleted, there's still a backup copy of it someplace. And I also think it's very important for me to give them an evaluation, a grade, in other words, on their article before they upload it to Wikipedia so that they don't feel that they're being graded by the Wikipedia community. I think the Wikipedia community gives a lot of wonderful feedback to my students, but it's kind of a gray or a dangerous area for them if they think that their grade is being based on what these people who are not their teachers are going to say about their article or how they're going to react to it. Actually, I have my students first build their articles on test pages. And there was a lot of talk about this at the Higher Education Summit. Um, some people use the sandbox, and that might work. I just uh, I don't know how to make that work because I haven't really tried it yet. Um, I get nervous about the sandbox because it looks like it's really easy for it to go away. Um, but having them build their articles on text, test pages, and then I read them, and I can comment on them, they can do another draft, they can fix the problems, and then they upload them to the encyclopedia, the live encyclopedia. That's worked really well for me. Here's why. Um, if they build their article on Wikipedia, they start getting harassed in process. People will start harassing them, oh, you know, you don't have any sources for this, and then they go, well, I don't, just didn't have a chance to add them yet, it's in progress, you know, and then they end up in my office, they're crying, they're whining. Um, so that didn't really work that well, yeah. Um, they really need to have the article written already. As I, I tell them, you know, it's got to be in as good shape as you can get it by midterm before you upload it. That's pretty much sacred in my class. And, um, yeah, and the other reason to do it on test pages is they can make use of all those great tools. I don't really, in my class, because it's a writing class, I kind of resent every little second that I spend teaching technology because I'm not a teacher of technology and that's not what I'm good at. Look at me, I'm still using a mouse, right? So, yeah, um, yeah technology is not my strong point. I, I teach writing and therefore it really makes sense for me to have my students building their articles with the tools that they can use on Wikipedia so they don't have to code everything. If they get into coding things, again, they're whining, they're crying, oh, it's too hard, you know, I'm having to do code, you know, this is a writing class, why am I spending all this time doing code? Um, so, you know, yeah. And, and the other beautiful thing about the test page, and I think this isn't that obvious to you, but from a beginner point of view, how is it going to look on? It's so easy to make a mistake with your coding and not realize that it's not going to look the way you think it's going to look on Wikipedia. And the test page, I think, really helps people see how it's going to look on Wikipedia. That's, that's also very important for my students. This is something that I've learned from trial 
trial and error. I didn't do this at first, but I learned, do it on the test, have them do it on the test page, have them build it so that it looks like a Wikipedia article. They can get the thrill of seeing it formatted right away. Okay, um, yeah, and so, you know, that has actually worked out really well for me. So now what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how, if you want to, and these are all respectful ideas, how the Wikipedia community can support newcomers and people who are writing articles on Wikipedia, maybe for a college class, or maybe they just want to start writing on Wikipedia. We've, we've talked a little bit about retaining new editors, so I do have a point of view on that. Okay, one thing I came up with that I think the Wikipedia community could do, and this is, there may already be an infrastructure for this, um, is to have a list of topics that are already screened for notability. And I think that this could actually easily be a refinement of the requested articles list. The only problem with finding a topic on the requested articles list is that sometimes it turns out those topics are not really notable enough for the community. And so if they could be pre-vetted, if there could be maybe be an asterisk next, next to some topics that have been pre-vetted for notability, that would make it really easy for my students and for other newcomers to identify something that they could write about that would not necessarily be challenged for notability. Another idea that I had was that perhaps nutshells could be improved for newcomers. Just a thought here. But let's quickly take a look together at the nutshell on notability. Okay, this page in a nutshell. Wikipedia articles cover notable topics, those that have gained sufficiently significant attention by the world at large and over a period of time and are not excluded for other reasons. We consider evidence from reliable independent sources such as published journals, books, and newspapers to gauge this attention. Notability does not directly affect the content of articles, but only whether the topic should have its own article. Okay, that's all very well and good. However, I was two years into to working on Wikipedia when a student learned of this quick and dirty formula for notability. Um, and, and I don't know if this is widely practiced. You guys could tell me whether it is or not. Um, somebody wrote to one of my students and said, here's the, here's the acid test. If there are two or more Google News or Google News archived articles on your topic, then it's notable. And if not, we're going to delete it. Okay, uh, my suggestion would be if that's a common practice, one that is commonly used on Wikipedia, why not put it in the nutshell so that people who are learning about doing this for the first time could make use of a, a little acid test like that. If there's that quick and dirty shortcut, give it to me so that I can use that quick and dirty shortcut, I think. You've probably heard this lament before, but I always think it's a beautiful idea to give New Year's Year's time to work on an article before nominating it for deletion. And um, oh, the other thing, I'm going to go ahead and say that the biggest disappointment that I've had on Wikipedia in, in an otherwise wonderful and joyous experience, I've had the most, most fun with this assignment of any assignment I've ever done. Um, but the biggest disappointment is when a student does a really, actually a pretty good article and gets absolutely no feedback at all. Um, and so I'm hoping that the little valentines and the new opportunities to show love to new Wikipedians will kick in. And that I'm also hoping, high, I have high hopes of the Campus Ambassador program and that Campus Ambassadors will kind of equalize the amount of feedback and the quality of feedback that different students are getting. Because what I have found in the past is that one student will get a lot of attention and a lot of feedback from the Wikipedia community, and then somebody else will get zero feedback whatsoever. I mean, just nothing, nowhere to go. And I tell students, well, on Wikipedia, no, good, no news is good news, but that doesn't really give them anywhere to go to improve in their writing. So it would be nice if, if everybody could get kind of the same amount of feedback. Um, I had a couple other things that occurred to me. Um, one is, 
maybe we don't have to really fuss at people so much about not signing their posts. I, just, just a thought, you know, for, from the point of view of new users, this obsession about reminding people to, to sign their posts. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and admit that for, from my point of view as a new user, being fussed at by somebody because I didn't sign a post, I just I thought it was a little psychotic, okay? I, I, you know, I, I would back off of that, you know? And, and please, I hope nobody during a question and answer will try to explain to me again why that's so important, because believe me, it has been explained to me. I just keep forgetting. Okay, um, so little things like that, maybe they could kind of be put into perspective, you know, and, and you know, into the perspective of the, thing, of the things that really matter on Wikipedia. And I guess the final thing that I would suggest is if you're going to watch lists somebody, maybe you should just go ahead and tell them that you're doing that because I have, again, my own experience as a newbie on Wikipedia is that there's somebody who has been following my work for a couple of years now and I think he thinks he's being helpful and I think that he's stalking me. And I, this is where I think maybe if you want to watch list somebody, it might be a good idea to just kind of introduce yourself and let them know that you're doing it. Otherwise, to people, so some people that might seem a little creepy. Okay, just you know, just trying to give it to you from the newcomer's perspective there. Okay, and that's it for me. What questions did y'all have, if any? Yes. Your, uh, to anybody help you? Yeah, well, the topic of my course is writing, and that's wonderful for me because, yeah, they can write about anything. I've had students write about um, a famous relative, you know, because of the six degrees of separation thing, I've had uh, several students who discovered that they had great uncles or great, you know, um, great grandfathers who were famous enough to be on Wikipedia. All of those articles are still on Wikipedia. They have not been challenged for notability. Um, yeah, and I've had students write about their high schools. That's not my favorite one. They write about the Granite Bowl. They write about things going on in Georgia. They write about a book that they've read. Yeah, it's very, very, very open. This is the one thing that my students love best about the assignment is that, yeah, they can write about whatever they're interested in as long as there's no Wikipedia article about it already. And it's notable, yeah. Yes. Uh, Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm uh, well. Firstly, let me compliment you. You're one of the few teachers. I mean, I'm from the campus program in India, and uh, well, if we had some open-minded teachers like you, we'd be a lot further than where we are right now. That aside, I, ha uh, I have a resume to give you. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that aside, uh, about the stalking bit as, as well. Uh, well, I'd like to quote Dr. Regal from today morning with well, uh, the fact that. And with an open community, well, you get a lot of good things, you get a few assholes as well. So you, you can't really help it. So. Yeah, I, d I do actually have a PS on that. I, I've come around to believing that this guy actually is helping me. I, th I think he really does mean to be helpful, but it just would have been better if, if from the outset he had just said, look, you know, I find your work interesting, so I'm going to be watch listing you, be, you know, be mentally prepared for it or something. Yeah, yeah so, uh, I mean, that's another thing. And... Uh, well, uh, my point mainly was about the notability thing that you were saying. Yeah. Uh, the the term that you use, the quick and dirty way. Yes, it is a lot of we we lot of people do use it as a thumb rule too. Well, mm -hmm. maybe if it's it has two Google News mentions, well, let's just make it notable. The point is that it's not it's it's a it's a thumb rule. It's something that a few people use in some way, but it cannot be formalized and put there as a notability guideline. Primarily because the notability guideline has to be said in so many words. If it could be said more briefly, it would be. But uh, the point is that while the Google News uh, uh, notability guideline is, well, fairly accurate, it does fall down on its face on a lot of things. And say we were to formalize it, that would be open, open a whole new Pandora's box of problems coming in. So hmm. I, think, uh, I think while a certain student might use it for their own benefit, again, even telling the students to use it as a thumb rule, you might want to exercise some caution there before doing so. I suppose okay. that, that's what I believe. Thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll grab the opportunity since, 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 since sit close to the person who had a mic. Um, uh, first question, uh, I'm kind of slightly confused. There is a, 
Wikiversity in the title of your topic. So uh, where's yeah. the Wikiversity? That was a mistake, actually. I think I was kind of hoping. <laughs> it, it has to. Yeah, I'm so it sorry. It was a trick to, to lure to more people. Oh yeah, into apparently it. it was. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think that had to do with a misunderstanding that I had about how to do the submissions. You know, my bad. Yeah, I'm still using a mouse. What can I tell you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm still, no I'm still a newcomer. So, so uh, and another question. You are uh, teaching um, composition, right? Or writing. Writing. Yes. yes. Okay. I am. So, do, do you believe there is a place for uh, uh, letting or making or forcing uh, students to uh, write Wikipedia articles in other areas in uh, when you are teaching something else? In right. Professional. Yeah. I do think there's an argument for that. I think it needs to be made by people in those fields. Um, I, you know, in other words, academic rules that you don't step on each other's territory kind of dictate that I can't say, oh yeah, somebody who teaches chemistry should definitely do this. You know, I think there's an argument to be made for it. You know, but it needs to be it needs to be made from people within those fields. You know, but some of the I think some people are stepping up and saying, yeah, this is a good thing to do. Uh -huh. um, I think I'm being told that I'm out of time, um, so. Sure. Um, it's a bit, a bit risky to um, let your students write on any topic uh, which they want. We had such an experience, uh, experience with uh, the students in online media and PR. Their teachers said, okay, two articles per the semester, one in the very discipline which uh, they are learning and one on any topic you like. So some of the girls wanted to write about flowers, their favorite flowers, and in the end of the uh, course, um, the people who are biologist experts in Bulgarian Wikipedia said, listen, don't, uh, don't mm, let them do this. They do not recognize what is the difference between genus, species, and kingdom. Mm. So um, you either have to recruit a specialist in, in this area hmm. or just ask them to, to stick to the topic. That's very interesting. Thank you. And now I guess we are out of time. Thank you very much. And, and particularly thanks to those of you who got conned into coming this on false pretenses. Yeah.